A producer's job is to take an artist's vision and turn it into reality. And we do that through our musical skills, our knowledge, and the tools we have at hand. But nowadays, almost everybody has the same tools. So to set ourselves out from the crowd, we have our secret weapons. Many of them are on my computer. A lot of them are uh, <laughs> scattered throughout my studio. And I'll show you more of that later on but we're always on the search to discover new secret weapons. Today, I'm going to find out if these little mics right here are going to be my new secret weapons. Here we go. I was recently recording a session for some of Zach Hooper's songs. Now, we'd originally put program drums on these songs, but we just wanted something with a bit more life in it. So we brought in Shane Lindzen, who was in a band with Zach many years ago called Cloud 10. And he's perfect for the kind of strong and beefy drums I want on these songs. Of course, I was loving pretty much everything that he did. Wanna try another? Yep. All right, here we go. But the chorus wasn't jumping out like I wanted it to. Make sure to stay off the floor on the floor in the second And I think it was because we had the live drums in the verses. In the original version, I'd put a little loop into the verses, which helped differentiate between that and the chorus, and it really helped make the chorus pop. But I really don't like using generic loops. So, still thinking about the verses. I still want a loop in there, but I kind of want to see if we could try doing one of our own. Right. Let's do this. So let me set up a couple of these weird mics. Let's actually see if we can make a loop just using those mics. So, um, give me a few minutes to set that up. I've been collecting these mics for a while. Some of them I've had since I was a teenager and started recording in the late 70s. Most of them are high impedance mics. I've been wanting to use them on a recording, but I just haven't had the opportunity, but maybe today is the day. I decided to use this old Panasonic mic, which my dad used to record messages to my mom using this old reel-to-reel -reel when he was in Vietnam in the late 60s. And this General Electric mic, which is the first mic I ever recorded anything into, and it went with a tape recorder that looked like this. My sister and I would use this for recording funny little interviews when we were 12 or 13 years old and living in West Berlin in the mid-70s. I placed the GE mic about two feet out from the kick drum, head height, and pointing down at the snare drum. I placed the Panasonic mic about a foot above the ground and about five feet out from the kick drum. For both the mics, I used an eighth inch jack to quarter inch adapter, and I plugged them into radial DIs. Both of the microphones were recorded through the Universal Audio Software mic prees. I was so excited to not only finally be able to record these microphones, but I'm going to get to work with Zach and Shane together again, which is really cool. Oh, Shane, are you ready? <laughs> All right, here we go. It's mostly the Panasonic mic. I had him try out a few different grooves that might work for making a loop. Using these kind of mics is not just something about tone or EQ curve, it's that these old high impedance microphones have a characteristic that no modern mic is gonna have. Nice, cool. All right, I'm gonna make a loop. Here's the Panasonic. Here's the General Electric. Quite different. I found a four bar section that I liked and then I did a little editing to tighten up the timing just a bit. I added a little EQ, but I didn't need much because the mics already sound kind of funky. The main thing I did do was add compression to the GE mic track, which is kind of the snare track with an SSL emulator by Slate. I just love how aggressive this compressor sounds with a fast attack and fast release on it. And I wanted to get the sound of the hi-hat and the snare drum ghost notes louder, so I made a copy of the snare drum track and removed all the snare drum hits so I could get those parts to stand out a little bit more. So here's the loop, and I changed the color of the clip so I could keep track of the newest version. Here it is alone. And just the kick. Snare. And then, weird hi-hat track. And then everyone together. Yeah, it grooves. And then, with the music. Yeah. I mean, it's a little loud. Let me turn it down just a little bit. This is gonna make this pop, man.
The next day I got to wondering whether that Panasonic mic might be a good secret weapon for recording electric guitar. I've also been experimenting with these first act amps, which are amps for kids. I've got two of them here that I bought in thrift stores. I raised the amps up so that I wouldn't get any sound reflections off the floor. I ended up choosing the MA401 amp model and also mic'd it with a Shure SM57 so I had something to compare the Panasonic mic to. I ran straight out of the guitar into this Radio SGI Studio Guitar Interface which allows me to plug into my amp which is in the vocal booth. On the other end there's another box and out of that I go straight into the amp. Both of the microphones went into Cappy VP28 mic pre's and straight into the computer via my Apogee Rosetta interface. And I added some delay in Pro Tools using the built-in mod delay. I'm going for a very unique sound for a guitar part that I've got at the end of one of my songs called Hearts Aligned. There's a lot going on on the end of that song and I want to get a guitar sound that fits into the mix and also sounds far away. Let's see how the mics compare. Here's the Panasonic. Here's the 57. Way buzzier. And behind the vocals, the 57 kind of gets in the way a little bit more. Whereas the Panasonic sits under it a lot nicer. It's got a nice thickness to it, which is cool. So I decided to maybe roll off some high end on that 57. It's got a lot up there. Let's just see if we can match it up a little bit. I don't know, that Panasonic's got a cool thickness to it that I like. Man, it, it's got something to it that's just cool. It's got this cool lower mid-range, and it also is doing this neat thing with the scratch of the guitar, like when it's just scratching on there. So I do think I'm going with that Panasonic. It's just like a very unique tone. So are these little microphones gonna be my new secret weapons? Absolutely. Especially since I'd be really surprised if there's anybody else out there using these particular mics to make records. But the thing that's really been in my head as I've made this video is, what really are my secret weapons? I mean, I do have a lot of stuff around here. I've been collecting so much stuff for decades. I really enjoy messing around with all this stuff, and quite often it has led me to have a different sound than anybody else. So in the end, I think my real secret weapon, for better or worse, is that I just always wanted to be different. I never wanted to sound like anyone else, and that's definitely affected my career more than a few times, but hey, that's just how it is. And all the people I really admire, they're the same way. So I think the best secret weapon is to be unique. And that is why, at the end of my videos, I always say, be unique.